Now I'm making the base that the pedestal will sit on, and it's over 14 inches wide, and it uses uh, 8 fourths material. That's 2 inches thick. So I don't have any uh, planks that wide, so I'm having to make up a plank. So I took a, a, a plank that was uh, about 8 inches wide, and I am going to butt glue the edges together and make my wide plank that I can then cut the uh, you know the elliptical shape from. Now in order to get uh, the angle uh, correct uh, so that when this glues up it's nice and flat, uh, you know I've got to run this edge through the jointer. Uh, what I'll do is I've marked the mating surfaces here and I'll run one of these boards through the jointer with the mark facing out and I'll run the other one with the mark facing in. So if there's any error in the jointer fence, uh, that'll cancel out, and when you put these two together, they should be nice and flat. when you put these together get a very tight glue line and if you can see down here the piece is made up just perfectly. Now since I'm gluing these two thick pieces together with a butt joint uh, I'm going to use a PVA glue uh, but PVA glue has a little bit of creep to it so just to prevent uh, the two pieces from getting out of alignment <coughs> over time due to creep I'm going to go ahead and put in four of these little biscuits uh, in, the, in the joint and that will help register the joint. It doesn't give the joint any more strength because uh, these butt joints are very, very strong. But it will help register the piece uh, if it tends to want to creep up a little bit on one side, it will help uh, prevent that. So I've got, the, uh, I've got the, uh, the biscuit cutter here. I've already set it up to uh, cut into the middle of the uh, of the piece. cut, the biscuit just fits in like that. I also made marks to know where to cut. When I had these pieces lined up, I made the mark straight across so that the, the alignment would be the same on both pieces. Is glue these biscuits into the slots. When I have the butt joint, and fit right together, and that'll help me out. And there we are, all glued up, nice butt joint. Uh, tomorrow we'll take clamps off and start shaping this into the base. This is the top platform that goes on top of the pedestal, and I've traced the bottom of the uh, you know, the base for the actual sculpture. I trace that and then I've drawn a line one half inch outside of that tracing. I'm going to cut to that line 
with the intention of later on using a 3 8 bit a cove bit on a router, uh, putting a cove, a 3 8 cove around here. So I'll just end up with a, a slight uh, flat overhang uh, below the base of the sculpture, and then the 3 8 cove, and then the rest of this, and this will be then attached to the top of the uh, of the upright pedestal portion. platform piece that I showed you uh, that I was cutting and sanding and I used a 3 8 inch cove cutting router bit to route a cove around here similar to this cove up here and you can see maybe where this base is just slightly smaller than there so I get a little ledge then I get a cove and uh, this will then be stained dark and be mounted to the top of the pedestal Okay, now I'm working on the uh, the, the base, and uh, the first thing I got to do is figure out how to cut the oval shape. Now, this is the platform that the that the uh, sculpture will fit on, and, and I simply had to trace this off the existing uh, base of the sculpture and, and and mimic it. So that was that was easy to do, and this is more of a true oval. What I'm actually doing here is I'm drawing an ellipse, which is something that I can actually figure out mathematically to draw. Now there may be other ways to do this, but this is a great starting point. Uh, to draw an ellipse, first of all you need a string, and you need to know the, the, the length of your, of your ellipse, which uh, they call that the uh, the, the major axis and, and the width, which is called the minor axis. What you do is you go ahead and you draw your center line, which would, for me was real easy because I, I book match these boards so that the joint is the center line. And mark the midpoint. And then go ahead and measure from the midpoint out to the, uh, to the edge, so half of the major axis. You'll measure that distance. Do the same thing for the minor axis, half the minor axis. And then you got to do a little math. you got to take this distance and square it. So let's just say that's 10 inches. So 10 inches times 10 inches is 100. So now you got that number. And then you take this distance and you square it. Let's say that's 6 inches, for example. So 6 inches times 6 inches is 36 inches. So you got 100 inches for that square and 36 for that square. Now you subtract this square from this square. So it's 100 minus the 36. So that gives you, uh, what, 64? If my math is, uh, is correct. And then you take the square root of that. So the square root of 64 would be 8 inches. Now you take that 8 inches, you measure from your center right on down the center line, 8 inches, and make a mark. Do the same thing on this side. And then you take your string, and I use tape. I simply tape one end of the string so that it'll pivot around at that mark. I do the same thing with the other end, so it'll pivot at that mark, but the question is, how long do you make the string? Well, you make the string so that when you take your pencil, and you put it in this loop, 
and it comes right on out to the end of the of the major axis to the you know where you want the ellipse to be drawn and then you tape the string down okay so eight inches from the center to a, to an X on each side tape the string down so it'll pivot on that X do the same thing on this end except you gotta have enough extra slack in that string to come on out to the edge of your ellipse and then all you gotta do is just run your pencil around don't pull too hard you'll pull it right out of the tape you do that make sure your string doesn't hang up on your tape and you do that all the way around and that's an ellipse so that's that's one way to draw an ellipse that, that works pretty well and you can do it for any situation so just remember that formula is you take the half the major axis and you square it. You take half the minor axis and you square it. Then you subtract that minor axis square from the major axis square. You come up with a number Then you take the square root of that number and that tells you the distance from the center to the X that you're going to draw and make that the pivot point for your strength. Okay, now it's time to attach or at least prepare to attach the top platform to the pedestal and uh, so I've uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to install some dowels, six dowels and then I'm going to make a decision that following that whether I need to put a screw through the top into the pedestal. I'd, I'd like to avoid that uh, because it just mars the top and if this ever gets used for something else you want to be able to see the top but uh, we keep that option so I've marked off uh, six holes for screws and I'm going to use two inch long three eighths uh, diameter fluted dowels I've got a guide here a guide block that will enable my hand drill to stay perpendicular to the uh, face of the of the pedestal as I uh, as I drill the hole and I've made a mark on my drill to know how deep I've got to go so I went ahead and uh, center punched the hole. So all I got to do is put my, I'll start with this one down here, put my brad point in there, in the center point, and then go ahead and drill. To mark the uh, where the dowel holes are supposed to be on the underside of the platform, I'm using uh, dowel centers, and uh, it's just a, a small uh, uh, steel uh, piece. This, the diameter of a dowel fits in the dowel hole. It's got a little point right in the middle, and if you can just set what you want to mark straight down on this, it'll leave a little impression, and that's where you drill the holes. So in order to get the holes drilled right, first of all, I have to make sure I'm oriented properly. So I am looking from the front. This is the front of the piece over towards me. Okay, the sculpture is going to stand like this facing me. So I also marked the front of the platform. And then I built a, a small guide. These walls on this guide are the same as the width of the pedestal. That's the depth of where I want the pedestal, so the pedestal is going to fit right in here. And I should be able to just slip this guide onto the top here, line up the walls. And that should be where I want the holes to be. So I'll just go ahead and check, make sure everything looks right. You only get one chance to do this right. You want to make sure you're lined up properly. Okay, that looks good. Now I'll take my dead blow mallet with a protective block of wood. Double 
double check my lineup. Give it a good whack. That should mark the holes. And sure enough, I've got six impressions here. I can go over to the uh, to the drill press and drill the holes, and everything will be very accurate. There we go. All the holes in the bottom of the top platform ready to be dowled into the pedestal. Now I'm going to screw the base to the bottom of the pedestal. So I've marked seven holes, three on the end that is going to be the outside of the cantilever. Remember this thing is, is tilted. And then the rest, now this is way overkill because I'm using these big number 14 three inch screws. I think this thing's going to be held down hard, but I figure, hey, what the heck, you know, 25 cents a screw, whatever it is, it's worth it to have all that extra insurance. So first thing I'll do is I'll drill all the way through with a 3 16th inch bit, and I'll flip it over and come back with a countersink bit, and I'll countersink the hole enough where I can put a plug, a plug which I'll cut with a tapered plug cutter, <coughs> excuse me, half inch tapered plug cutter, and I'll cut the plugs in the cutoffs that I used for this wood, for this piece. And that way, when I put the plugs in, it'll be a matching wood. And then finally, once the uh, <clears throat> once countersinks are, are, are cut, I'll come back with a quarter inch bit, which is the, uh, the size you need for these stainless steel screws, uh, shanks, and drill all the way through again. And then I'll be ready to go ahead and, and uh, mark my holes on the actual pedestal and screw and you know drill the pilot's holes for these seven screws into the pedestal. And you notice I've got a, a backer board down here so that when my, when my uh, bit goes through it won't tear out the grain in the bottom of the uh, of this piece. cutting plugs, cut some extra. I needed seven, I made like twelve. Here I go. I've got a bunch of tapered plugs from the same material. They'll fit in. I'll saw them off flush. You never know they're there. Okay, now I'm going to loosely fit the platform on top of the pedestal. I just put in four of the dowels dry. So I can pull them out again. And this, this is going to enable me to have a, a base when I turn this upside down in which to mark the holes for the screws. heavy. I'm 
Okay, so I've got this upside down using the marks I had made for <clears throat> laying out this piece. I've got it in the correct position using a little piece of tape to prevent it from tipping over while I take a center punch that is a, 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 this is like a marking punch uh, one size smaller than the hole I drilled, holes I drilled so I can fit it in easily and just go ahead and give it a tap mark the holes make sure I haven't had any shifting looking good if I use the same size punch as the uh, hole I'd be fighting to get the punch out every time because they're a real tight fit just make sure I've got all these and uh, I'd lose my alignment so now I'm in good shape let's get them a little bit deeper just to make sure I have good marks to follow there we go now I can drill the pilot holes for those number 14 screws and I'll screw a couple in just to see how it sets but I'll wait till later to finish up that job. I'm using a little screw lubricant, uh, stuff's called Lloyd's Ack and Pucky. can't remember exactly where I got it, but it's kind of like a little waxy soap. There we go. Now I, I know I won't have any problems later on trying to get the screws in. Well, this is what the stand looks like uh, roughly put together. I haven't, uh, you know, glued it up or anything because I need to take it apart to do the finishing. I decided to go ahead and put a couple of screws in through the top even though I have the dowels because I just didn't feel comfortable. you got to feel comfortable. So I got some of those number th uh, three inch number 14 screws going down into there and also uh, my client uh, has requested that I actually screw the base of the uh, sculpture to this platform so all this will be uh, covered and uh, it's very stable and strong. Uh, I've gone ahead and uh, actually placed the sculpture on here and it fits just right very stable and uh, so I'm happy with it uh, client has come by to see it and client is happy as well so now I'm going to take it apart uh, finish uh, doing a little sanding and so forth and uh, do the dyeing and the finishing of the piece and then we'll, we'll go ahead and glue and screw it together and we'll be all done.